No one shall defeat Tiny Nightmare Moon. Oh, wait, except for Giant Celestia of Death. Huh. You know, I wonder what really happened with Celestia and Luna. The Journal of the Two Pony Sisters. Huh. Neat. Hey, buddy, what's up? Ultramag CD4 here. And I'm here to proudly bring you my review of the Journal of the Two Pony Sisters book. So, here's the thing. Throughout the show in My Little Pony, we have been introduced to these two princesses. We've been introduced to this kingdom of Equestria. And we've never really gotten much of an explanation for a lot of things. There's been a lot of things we just don't know about Equestria. And this book clarifies a lot of things. Now granted, it's not the be-all, end-all... It's not the brony guide to equestrian history. However, it does bring to light a lot of things. It sheds more light on Star Swirl the Bearded. It sheds more light on Celestia, Luna, Zebras, Griffins, Manticores, the Crystal Empire. It brings out a lot of things that not only harken back to the show, but also bring to light a lot of things we didn't know, such as the origin of Zebras. And not only that, we also get more info on Griffins as well, which I know the fandom as a whole really wants more Griffin action. They want to know what's going on with the Griffins, and with this book, it doesn't shed a lot of light on, you know, the kingdom of the Griffins, but it does shed some light on it, and I feel like that's a really strong, really cool thing. Not only that, but the book also looks amazing. It is a hardcover book that looks like it would be in the show. And I really, really like that. I really hope that with the Daring Duke collection coming out in the fall, I really hope that we get more show-type props, air quote, air quote, because I feel like they are really cool and they just look really good. I really like how this book is represented. Now, the thing about the representation is in the pages themselves, it actually has a border and drawings of things that are happening in the book. And they look really good, but here's the thing, here's my one problem with the book. Well, one of many problems with the book. The later half of the book, after Celestia and Luna's story ends, we start the Journal of the Main Six, which, as we know in Season 4, is a thing. However, that book, I feel like, should be a separate book. It should be its own book and not included in the Journal of the Sisters because, if memory serves, the Journal of the Two Pony Sisters was a separate book to the Book of the Main Six. And so, completing them in one book, while it may save time on production and making another book, and also kind of beefing up this book, I feel like that's a really, really kind of lazy thing to do, especially since this book looks so good. And I feel like if this were the main sixes journal, it would look really good next to one another. And I feel like that's just a missed opportunity. Not only that, but throughout Luna and Celestia's story, we get these really cool drawings similar to what we saw in the season one opener. And they're completely gone in the later half. They use the stock generic vectors for the main six's journal. And I feel like that is just horribly done. I feel like they should have put a little bit more effort into it. It just shows to me that maybe the later half of the book was a little rushed. And not only that, but also the later half of the book is basically just summaries and quotes from the lessons that the main six learned. Now granted, the later half of the book is okay. However, they do give a lot of detail. They add a little comic strip that Spike drew, and they also use highlighter to highlight the things that Discord highlighted in the season finale, which is a great attention to detail. But I do feel like they should have included more pictures. They do include a few pictures. By pictures, I mean photographs. If they'd included more photographs of what had happened and whatnot, I feel like it would have been a lot more authentic. But including the stock vectors in the later half of the book just kind of ruins that whole aesthetic for me of, hey, I'm actually reading Luna and Celestia's journal. Which is another thing, it's a little uncomfortable for me to feel like I'm reading Celestia and Luna's journal, but that's just a personal problem. Overall, just really love the stories that this book tells. This book is not really a story story, it's more of a 
telling of the history of Equestria. Now here's another thing that I found interesting in the book. And on that, we also get some more insight into the Crystal Empire, along with a few other things. I'm not going to try and spoil everything in the book. However, I do want to state that me, Celestia, and Luna may or may not have something in common. I do want to touch on Star Swirl the Bearded. Now, Star Swirl the Bearded has been an enigma for me for the longest time. He was mentioned first in Lunar Eclipse. And to finally know exactly what he does and where he comes from and whatnot is Awesome. Not only that, we also get a little bit of a glimpse into Luna and Celestia's fillyhood, which I felt was awesome. Now, if only we can get a little bit more info about their parents, because I really feel like we need more info about Luna and Celestia's origin, as in parents, as in how they were born into being Alicorn. Now, this book does shed light on the whole Alicorn thing. It also sheds light on the royal Canterlot voice that Luna uses. And I feel like this book really does a good job on fleshing out a lot of the world in Equestria and also the ponies that live within it. And not only that, but it also fleshes out a lot about the griffins, dragons, and other creatures that live there. And I feel like that is just wonderful. And I feel like if you're a brony and you have a thirst for knowledge similar to me and Celestia, then I would highly, highly recommend you pick this book up. And for the price that it is, that's only $10. For the amount of knowledge you gain from it, if especially you're into analysis and also knowing everything there is to know about ponies, I would without a doubt recommend this book. I cannot say how much this book is just essential if you're wanting to get into analysis, if you're wanting to, you know, look into pony history and whatnot, I would highly recommend it. As for if this book is canon, I personally would consider it canon because it is written by Amy Keaton Rogers and she is one of the show's writers, and so, if de facto, I believe this book is completely canon, and it really does feel like you're reading Celestia and Luna's words. Granted, a younger and more adolescent Celestia and Luna, but still Luna and Celestia nonetheless. But anyway guys, that's about gonna do it for my review. Honestly, I feel like this book is a really good buy, especially if you're looking for more on the history and knowledge side of Equestria. Now, if you're looking for an action-packed story with twists and turns and just an overall great novel, I would recommend that you wait until you get the Daring Do collection, which you can pre-order on barnesandnoble.com for about 70 bones. But anyway, guys, I'm Ultramax. If you remember, don't feed those bear sprites. And as always, happy gaming. I'll check you out on the website. Bye! Snow and moonlight's embrace Bear of my